Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. We're here at the Rector of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer according to the 1928 prayer book. It's Wednesday in the week of the second uh, Sunday of Advent, um, and it's also a minor feast day, the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but we'll be just using the regular uh, lessons for Advent. Uh, we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. Uh, the one who draws nigh is both our Maker and our Savior. We uh, should do right to give heed to his voice today. Okay, Judy, are you going to join us? He's been disdaining uh, morning prayer for some time, an unusual appearance, not sure, indecisive. 
Psalms for the eighth day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 387, Psalms 38, 39, and 40. Psalm 38 is one of the seven penitential psalms. It's a psalm for uh, the deliverance from God's wrath against sin as the psalmist experiences it both physically and mentally. Put me not to rebuke, O Lord, in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy heavy displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no health in my flesh because of thy displeasure, neither is there any rest in my bones by reason of my sin. For my wickednesses are gone over my head, and are like a sore burden too heavy for me to bear. My wounds stink and are corrupt through my foolishness. I am brought into so great trouble and misery that I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with the sore disease, and there is no whole part in my body. I am feeble and sore smitten. I have roared for the very disquietness of my heart. Lord, thou knowest all my desire, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength hath failed me, and the light of mine eyes is gone from me. My lovers and my neighbors did stand looking upon my trouble, and my kinsmen stood afar off. They also that sought after my life laid snares for me, and they that went about to do me evil talked of wickedness and imagined deceit all the day long. Um, as for me, I was like a deaf man and heard not, and as one that is dumb, who doth not open his mouth. I became even as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Thou shalt answer for me, O Lord my God. I have required that they, even mine enemies, should not triumph over me. For when my foot slipped, they rejoiced greatly against me. And I truly am set in the plague, and my heaviness is ever in my sight. For I will confess my wickedness and be sorry for my sin. But mine enemies live and are mighty, and they that hate me wrongfully are many in number. They also that reward evil for good are against me, because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord my God. Be not thou far from me. Haste thee to help me, O Lord God of my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 39 is a meditation, a rather poignant one, on man's mortality, uh, seeing it in relation to God's uh, disciplining of sinners, and it's a prayer for respite. I said I will take heed to my ways, that I offend not in my tongue. I will keep my mouth as it were with a bridle. <laughs> what was that for? Um, while the ungodly is in my sight. I held my tongue and spake nothing. I kept silence, yet even from good words, but it was pain and grief to me. My heart was hot within me, and while I was thus musing, the fire kindled, and at the last I spake with my tongue. Lord, let me know mine end and the number of my days, that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily every man living is altogether vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow, and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches, and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly my hope is even in thee. Deliver me from all my offenses, and make me not a rebuke to, to the foolish. I became dumb and opened not my mouth, for it was thy doing. Take thy plagues away from me. I am even consumed by the means of thy heavy hand. When thou with rebukes dost chasten man for sin, thou makest his beauty to consume away, like as it were a moth fretting a garment. Every man, therefore, is but vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at thy tears. For I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me a little, that I may recover my strength, before I go hence and be no more seen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 40 is a, a, a prayer for deliverance. 
Um, but uh, it is one that is, uh, um, can be read prophetically as uh, foretell foretelling Christ's passion, uh, speaking of uh, the perfect obedience unto death, which is the s sacrifice that delivers us from the sin and death that Psalms 38 and 39 were uh, praying for. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my calling. He brought me also out of the horrible pit, out of the mire and clay, and set my feet upon the rock, and ordered my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even a thanksgiving unto our God. Many shall see it in fear, and shall put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that has set his hope in the Lord, and turn not unto the proud, and to such as go about with lies. O Lord my God, great are the wondrous works which thou hast done. Like as be also thy thoughts, which are to usward, and yet there is no man that ordereth them unto thee. If I should declare them and speak of them, they should be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, that I should fulfill thy will, O my God. I am content to do it, yea, thy law is within my heart. I have declared thy righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I will not refrain my lips, O Lord, and that thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. My talk hath been of thy truth and of thy salvation. I have not kept back thy loving mercy and truth from the great congregation. Withdraw not thou thy mercy from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth always preserve me. For innumerable troubles are come about me. My sins have taken such hold upon me that I am not able to look up. Yea, they are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart hath failed me. O Lord, let it be thy pleasure to deliver me. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to rebuke that wish me evil. Let them be desolate and rewarded with shame, and say unto me, Fie upon thee, fie upon thee. Let all those that seek thee be joyful and glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say always, The Lord be praised. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord careth for me. Thou art my helper and redeemer. Make no long tarrying, O my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Uh, here begins the 21st chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's a passage which is enigmatic and elusive, and uh, its language is apocalyptic. It's uh, a prophecy of the fall of Babylon, also of the tribes of Kedar. It's uh, uh, jumps around a bit, but the basic underlying motif seems to be about God's bringing to an end a world of brutality symbolized by Babylon and Kedar, also actualized by them, which is good news for Israel and also for Seir, its neighbor Edom, and the refugees of Dedan. The exalted ones are brought low, and the humble ones, uh, that is good news for the humble. The burden of the desert of the sea. As whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert, from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege O Media, the enemies of, of Babylon. All the sighing thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me. As the pangs of a woman that travaileth, I was bowed down at the hearing of it, I was dismayed at the seeing of it, my heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me, the night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. And then a description of that, the night of pleasure being turned into fear. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, said a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. 
and he hearkened diligently with such much heed. And he cried, A lion, my heart, Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, there cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods he hath broken into the ground. O my threshing, and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma. He calleth to me out of Seir, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye travelling companies of Dedanum. The inhabitants of the land of Tema brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn sword, and from the bent bow, and from the grievousness of war. They're refugees in the desert. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Within a year, according to the years of an hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail, and the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished. For the Lord God of Israel hath spoken it. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. In honor of the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, commemorated today, we'll recite the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood, Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted let me never be confounded. Well, as you may deduce, uh, himself is installed in, in a somewhat cantankerous frame of mind. Uh, here beginneth the 21st verse of the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark. And uh, uh, here is um, one of the most notable um, double miracles uh, that Mark uh, recounts, and he does it in a very characteristic way. He begins one story and then interrupts it with a second one and then returns and completes the second story, for the first story. So it's sometimes called the, uh, a sandwich, right, in which the two, one fits inside the other. And, uh, well, let's read them. They're, 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 they're very remarkable. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, 
that she may be healed and she shall live. Uh, so a notable faith in Jesus from someone of high status. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood, hemorrhaging, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. So she's in desperate uh, situation, a uh, hopeless one. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So a similar kind of hope uh, to the one Jairus has expressed it. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself the virtue, power, had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with them, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is, being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel rose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly, that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Here endeth the second lesson. So, um, uh, you know, in both cases, what's remarkable here, of course, is that uh, Jesus does give himself in saving power to faith and to faith alone. There's the great crowd of people pressing on Jesus, uh, but it's just the woman who is, is, uh, touches him uh, with faith. Um, and uh, so the other side of this is, of course, the business about her touch of Jesus, the hem of his garment, and Jesus taking the girl by the hand to lift her up, uh, which is to say that um, the, uh, we are, uh, by outward and visible means, the ministry of word and sacrament, the word audible and the word visible, uh, we are indeed called to faith, and our faith is sustained, uh, but it is an expressed uh, but it is indeed uh, through faith and to faith alone that Jesus gives himself in saving power. And uh, so if we wonder why we have not experienced uh, that saving power, uh, we've been in the crowd, but we have not touched the hem of his garment with faith. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, 
through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health unto all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, for its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love and charity for its mission and ministry in all places. For I bid your prayers for our country and all countries and their peace, order, and good government and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression, especially in North Korea, in China, Hong Kong, Tibet, Xinjiang, Afghanistan, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, Ethiopia, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, Haiti, and for the peoples of the Sahel um, in West Africa. And uh, I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world and many denominations for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity, of prayer and service, of giving and also suffering uh, patiently for the gospel's sake. I bid your prayers for those who do suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers for those uh, uh, who have come through childbirth, both mother and child, those dealing with cancer, especially breast cancer, and the treatments that it requires, uh, for um, those who are uh, grieving, For those who are dealing with depression or mental illness, any kind. Those dealing with the challenge of sobriety. Those recovering from surgery or undergoing it. Those who are suffering from debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, the effects of stroke. For those who are orphaned and abandoned used, hungry, homeless, without livelihood. For the caregivers and for those who minister to the sick with the healing arts and sciences. And we remember before God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and not rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. On this day, that under the divine protection, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, being sanctified by his Holy Spirit, uh, transformed in the likeness of his Son, made fit to stand before him when he comes again in glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, 
and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee, and do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. May he grant you your prayers according to his most perfect will.